see, like when you ask me who I'd like to kill, like who I'd really enjoy killing, uh, uh, those are the kind of guys. Like I would love to kill dudes like that that prey on children. Like I would like it. Like I, I'd sleep well at night. Yeah, I could. Yeah, one hundred. I'm not a mean person, but yeah, like Callan, someone like that. Yeah, kill a Callan. Oh, someone man. like that, I could definitely. Oh, have. I would love it. I would take that fucker out with my bare hands. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let me do it. I would do it. What's like, weird? I remember when I was in elementary school. There was like a. There's flyers going around that there's a white van with tinted windows going around <laughs> taking kids. Damn. With candy. I mean, it is just that is the perfect recipe. As a parent, as a parent, kid, I a, love candy. Now, yeah. if you had, if you had one of those big ass jawbreakers and a set of Ninja Turtles, I'm gonna get in that van. I know. I'm gonna get right in that van. If you had that Master Splinter that I was looking for to complete the collection, I'm gonna jump in your van. Forget yep. the candy. Yep. That's the thing. Is it that big of a problem today or no? Kids are more educated today, right? It's still I don't know. I, I mean, I, I definitely problem. feel like I was you know, raised by pretty good parents who told me don't fuck around with strangers. Definitely don't get in any stranger's car. And I, I bet it didn't even cross my mind not to go and well, people like that make it make guy. it their job. So so they, they this this woman was in, I think, a uh, Walmart or something or Kmart. She her daughter disappears right away. She goes, what the fuck? She goes, she goes right to the security. They lock, they shut down, they close down the entire department store. Found that kid in the bathroom with a shaved head and different clothes on. Damn. Yeah. So they, they those kind of people make it their job. And all I want, how scary is that? If you gave me one superpower, it would just be to be able to picture to find those guys, like just to smell child killers. Or whatever those are, Snow. and then uh, and then just uh, let me uh, just give me a special way to kill him without uh, anybody finding out. They just would die, and I just go around the country doing that. So you want to be a superhero? Just a killer. I want to kill anybody. We're gonna who need hurts to children. get you on some sort of supplements. Well, because you true. get your ass whooped. Nah, I got a lot of tricks, bro. <laughs> so do they. They do. They might right? shave your head, and grease you up. Um, I don't you go mind. in there to kill him. Okay, no problem. Is it your biggest fear as a parent? I would assume the, it's the, it's anybody's any parent's biggest fear is it's a life ender. But in Cal- it's yeah, it's a life ender. You'd never be the same. But no. in, but in Calabasas, you don't know what they're doing to your child. If the child disappears like that, it's the you know it's you, you can't think the worst. The, there are things in life. There are the unbearable. It's, some things are unbearable. My best friend said something to me. There was a guy, and I was a young, too young to understand. This guy lost his um, wife. She got hit by a cab. And and the, he he was he was he was such a mess over it. He'd been with her for thirty years, and I said to him because I'd heard it somewhere. I go, you know, you never lose somebody. They always say you don't lose somebody if you you only lose somebody if you stop loving them. And he said, "Have a good day." That's all I said. And I walked that didn't away. Help him Fuck at no! All. I walked away. And my buddy Jimmy Burke said, "Hey, something you should know." He's five years older. He goes, "There's something called inconsolable grief. That's it." And he's inconsolable right now, and it's okay. But there's nothing you can do to help. I wanted to help him. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Shit. Isn't it weird? Like you can't. There's no. There's no scale. There's no. There's nothing that can kind of put a numerical value on heartbreak. Right. There's nothing you can do. There's literally nothing. Well, you can you, do. that's a really good point because you bring up. You know, listen. There are a lot of things like that in life. It's kind of like one of the things they. You know, if you religious people will always talk about God in those terms, like. So much of what we consider reality is things we can measure with our eye, with our ear, and with an instrument. So if you think about the, you know, whatever it might That's be. That's where science comes into sure. play. But heartbreak, you really can't. Right. Love, put, heartbreak, mm-hmm. those kinds of things, those wonder, the, the wondrous things in the world, the, the things that you can't put a finger on. Even the concept of infinity, which mathematicians use all the time, is not something you can really actually really imagine. You can imagine it, but you certainly can't measure it. And... That that's an important part of reality. <clears throat> there was this uh I'm not gonna say his name, but there was this doctor. He was like the the doctor for the fighters in Colorado and he had a wife, three kids. They're in a oh, I don't know what kind of manufacturer the car was, probably a Volvo, whatever. And they're driving from Wyoming back to Denver. Like I said, he was the doctor of all of us. We worked with him nonstop. Great guy. Great guy, always smiling, always super, you know, outgoing. A guy you want to be around. He's a guy, you know, during fight time, it's stressful. This is when I was doing Ring of Fire, so smaller shows, but he was just the doctor. You go, what's up, doc? Kids, beautiful kids, wife. So he's driving back from Wyoming to Denver, <clears throat> and there's a, a, a warning for a flash flood. And they tell him not to, I, I, this is what I was told. This isn't from him. This is why, so if I mess up the, some of the details, don't jump on me, but you'll get the bottom line here. So, 
Uh, he drives from Wyoming to Denver. They warn about a flash flood. He decides to drive anyways. His car's going, and there's a huge like flood going through this bridge, and he thought if he went fast enough, he could get over it. Mm. Well, he goes, and the car tumbles, goes upside down. He's the only one that lived. Damn. Everyone else died. His wife, three kids. It was like three-year-old, two-year-old, and a newborn God. baby. His the whole entire world dies. Yeah. So like probably th- two months later, they go, hey, we're doing this fundraiser, raise money, you know, like raise money for him, help him out, stuff like that. So myself, Shane Carwin, Elliot Marshall, Nate, Mark Hart, and Cody Domin go and uh, sign all this stuff to help raise money, you know, for the guy and his family. And I remember seeing him, <clears throat> and I remember just looking at him. You could just tell it was like, I don't know how he did. I, I just remember being like, there's, there's nothing I can say. There's nothing anyone in this. There's tons of people around. Mm. Like, there's nothing we can do to help this situation. You really can't. No. And I just remember, like, think if you could feel the way his heart feels. I yeah. just remember, like, being, like, I was signing stuff. I just remember staring at him, just sta- taking him in, yeah. just being like, dang, that dude's heart must be fucking destroyed. Does it ever get better? Maybe, maybe down the road, but wife, three kids. Well, the way I look at it is like my buddy lost his brother in 9-11 and he turned it into a huge charity. So he he created this whole event around it where he said, my brother lost his life. It's going to mean something. So now he raises money for kids who are underprivileged to go to college. I get and, that and, stuff. It's not, it doesn't necessarily make it your pain doesn't. go away. It doesn't. But at it least gets- he said, he said the, I got to do something with this grief and it's going to motivate me to do something positive. It, they, you're still, what they say is you don't lose the grief, but you learn how to live with it. That's what they say. With real, with that kind of grief, they say you'll never lose it, but you'll you'll learn to live with it. You know, like I, I said, I, I told the story on Rogan's podcast. I don't know if you were there, but it was really kind of fascinating. Morse code. You know what Morse code is? Yeah. So 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 Morse <laughs> was yeah <laughs> the, the biggest breakthrough in <clears throat> communication history was Morse code, not the internet. Why? Because <clears throat> before Morse code, and I think it was 1840, um, you could only get a message to somebody by boat foot horseback like birds carrier maybe? pigeon but yeah. really, really they had to, it was one route reliable and, yeah, yeah. but pigeons. for the most part those were the only and that was true from the beginning of time up until from alexander the great george washington and all the way up into the 1800s in, in the united states so this guy morse really really famous painter really really famous uh oil painter in the united states and actually in europe as well he gets, a tele- he gets a message from somebody. They ride it. A horse guy comes out and says, listen, your wife is sick. And he was in Connecticut. He had to get up to upstate New York. Your wife is sick. Come and see her. By the time he got there, he loved his wife. By the time he got up there, not only was she dead, she'd been buried. They buried her. He didn't even got a chance to say goodbye to her. He was so grief-stricken. He said, there's got to be a way. And this is a painter. He goes, there's got to be a way I can get a message to somebody faster. He's on a boat seven years later. There's this dude working with electromagnetic fields. He meets him, this physicist. He says, he starts talking to him. And Morse, he was a painter, but he was also like a tinker, kind of like, a, like he was good with mechanics and stuff, and an inventor. And he goes, why don't we come up with a way to come up, like to get a signal to somebody? Long story short, because his, he was so distraught and wanted so badly to get a message faster than you would with horse, boat, or foot, he and this inventor, it was his, his idea and his energy that actually invented Morse code. And when they finally did, I think they sent a signal across like 12 miles or 12, whatever it was. It was the biggest breakthrough in history of communication. And we never looked back, of course. And then, so then we had the telegram and that changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole history of communication. Yeah. Um, it I still think, doesn't make it, you know. Yeah, that still doesn't make the grieving process mm-hmm. any easier but a lot of time those ideas like those come from frustration 100%. where the, and it it takes super creative minds and uh you know motivated people where if these negative things didn't happen some of the stuff would would never come about that's right that's right it's like the i was listening to a podcast with the, the owner of uh, virgin records and virgin airlines what's his name uh um, richard, branson. Branson. richard branson yeah richard yeah. branson <clears throat> and the way he started an airline, obviously it's a little different. The guy's a jagillionaire, Scrooge McDuck, living on an island. But he was flying um, in England, and he just got bumped off his flight. He was like flying United or some shit, or uh, British Airways. And they're like, oh, sorry, your, your flight's late, and we can't get you on the next one. You're just off. And he's like, well, 
there has to be something you can do. And there's people behind them like, dude, we got bummed off our flight. We, you know, we have this. My daughter's giving birth tomorrow. I have to be there. And he was literally like, the airline was like, sorry, what are you going to do about it? Sorry. And he's like, fuck this, man. Uh, got it. Obviously, this is different. So a lot of people can't relate to this. Got a private plane, chartered all those people, got them to their destination. It's like, I'm sick of this shit, man. I'm going to start my own airline. I'm not going to put up with their shit anymore. Wow. Started his own airline, Virgin. Yeah. Atl- Great yeah. airline, by the Great, way. My favorite. No doubt. And that's how I got started. Yeah. By just frustration of, yeah. of the airlines always screwing them over. Necessity and him not being invention. able to do it. Yeah. You know? It's crazy. That's that's kind of like a war in war. There are a great deal of inventions that came out of wartime. Um, as bad as war is, I mean, you know, preservation of food, all kinds of things. You know, so it was crazy. So that's that's the thing to keep in mind, at least for an individual. If you're going through a hard time, look at what you can gain from it, and look at what how you can react. You can react two ways. You can let it defeat you, or you can let it motivate you to well, come up we with a better way. We were talking about this. It's kind of switching gears. We we're talking about this before we came in. I always tell you when, whenever I have an issue with someone, I hate when someone's upset at me or they, if they don't like me. Yes. Someone that I know, not not people on the internet or, or fans. Or that's it's, whatever. That's someone you work someone with that I work with, know, or I have yeah. a personal relationship with, or somewhere down the road. It's always weird to me because I want to right away be like, let's just get face to face. Let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. What is your deal? What is your deal? Because I guarantee you there's been some sort of, it's like telephone. When you're a kid, when you play telephone, somewhere down the line, things got out of control and you didn't hear it from the horse's mouth. So let's talk. It's tough, man. I'm so much that way. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I can't stand like that heavy I'm energy. I'm having that right now. Yeah, that heavy energy where the, like somebody has the wrong impression of you or they don't like you and it's like- It's so far It's off. just unfair, man. It's like, you know, you had the wrong idea of who I am. Mm-hmm. It's um, weird. I think about that too. Like, if you talk to older people, or, or just my experiences in general, this is finding the kids serious edition. But <laughs> when you when you when you when you uh, look at people and you think about all the people you met in your life, girlfriends that you've cared about, girlfriends I lived together with for four years that I don't even talk to anymore. Yeah. Know me? They know me better than oh, probably ninety nine percent of the people out there besides my family. Don't talk to them anymore. Yeah. How weird is that? It is weird. Isn't that weird? It's really weird. I also wonder where that love goes, too. Isn't that funny? I don't think it ever goes away. No? I don't think it ever goes away. Mm. I don't. I think if you love someone, you're uh, no matter, granted, unless, even even if they cheat on you, which that's not my case, but uh, that love never is never going to go away. Yeah. You just, you put it towards something else, but you're still always going to love that person. Yeah, maybe you're right. I think you're I don't right. Think when it you ever see goes them, away. you have deep affection always, or fondness. Or- it's, it's, like, it's like you and I could go... Two years without seeing each other, and when we see each other, two years, we just pick right back up. No doubt, that's for sure. With my 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 close buddy, can go, guy friends, yeah. no question. I, I like my my friends, yeah. you know, Joe Kloffenstein, uh, Cody Donovan, Tim. Yeah, people I, me, you share me, experience. Me and Tim with. won't talk for maybe two months. I'll see him, and it's just like we've been together every day. Yeah. It's just different, man. Yeah, yeah. It's Isn't true. it weird? It is. I think you're right. That, that makes sense. It never goes away, really, in one way. I don't think another. it ever goes away. Anyone who says that is fooling themselves. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to get back together when you see. Them. I'm just saying that's never going to go away. You but have a fondness, it's, but it's just yeah. weird to me. Like I, th- like I think about my my friend Joey Shenagel, who was basically like my brother growing up. We spent every single day for 12 years together. I don't even talk to you anymore. You know why though? That that can be just uh, there's a lack of relevance to your life. I agree. You just don't have the same interests. There's no reason. There's nothing much to talk about besides memories because you don't. You're not sharing the same interests. You're not. You're not even in the same endeavors. You're not even actually going after the same thing. I agree. You're both in a lane, and it's like it goes yeah. this way. It's hard to get back to the middle. But with girls and girlfriends, I feel like it's different. Like I like all right. We didn't work out. I don't get why we can't still be friends. I still support you. It's too you. emotional, probably. Like, you, you know, I, I was thinking about, like, you ever think about the through line between why friends are friends? Like, you and I bond on the idea that we're never satisfied. Yeah.